What's up guys, it's Rob here and today we're going to be talking about some key data points that are likely to be driving markets over the next couple of days. If you guys know anything about the market, you're going to know that the Federal Reserve has essentially been in the driver's seat deciding where stock prices go and there are some very positive developments for what the Fed might be doing in the near future that could be driving stocks to the upside. I'm going to break those down for you in this video, let you guys know my thoughts on the market. So if you appreciate that, feel free to drop a like on the video. And other than that, we're about to get started. So the first thing to know is that the Federal Reserve is going to be meeting on Wednesday, July 27th. At this meeting, they're going to be deciding to raise interest rates. They'll most likely, at least analysts are expecting, they'll likely decide to raise rates by 0.75% to a rate of 2.5%. That's going to be the new Federal Reserve rate after this meeting, most likely. Now, that's already priced into the market. Analysts have been talking about this for a long time. After we saw the last inflation reading at 9.1%, it was almost doubtless that they were going to be doing this because they really want to combat inflation. That's been the name of the game for the Federal Reserve over the past couple of months. They've just been trying to combat inflation. And if you look at the inflation chart, you'll notice they've actually been failing to combat it. June, with a reading of 9.1%, was our highest reading to date that we've had so far in this escapade with inflation. And all in all, it's been a pretty unsuccessful fight. The Fed, although, is looking at this and looking at some of the current data that's not reflected in this most recent CPI report and is likely acknowledging the fact that inflation could be coming down in the near future. And they're probably very excited about that. In fact, they probably won't want to be too hawkish for too much longer, especially considering that the overall market is starting to come back just a little bit. They'll want to ease off, most likely, on this inflation fight if inflation is already on the decline. Now, there are a couple of things that you have to know about inflation and what's been causing it to go up in the past. Most recently, the price of gas has actually been a huge driver for inflation, the price of oil, essentially, right? You guys probably noticed this when you're filling up your cars, the price of gas has gone up dramatically. That's due to the conflict in Russia and Ukraine. And unfortunately, gas prices have been skyrocketing many months in a row. You can see the price of energy right here in the month of June up 7.5%. Uh, the price of energy commodities up 10%, the price of gasoline up 11%, the price of piped gas services up 8.2%. So a lot of these uh, categories are actually mostly based on the price of oil. And fortunately enough, oil has actually been on the decline. In fact, over the past three months, this chart is tracking the past three months of oil prices. You can see not only have we been falling in the month of July, but just yesterday we actually hit three month lows on gas prices. And even today, we're pretty close to the three month lows. We're up a little bit today, but gas prices, or at least oil prices, are below $100 per barrel. They've been there somewhat steadily for the past couple of days, and hopefully they won't return to above $100 a barrel for a long time. But this is certainly helping out with the fight against inflation, the fact that oil prices are on the move down. Now, it's not just been oil. You can also see that food has been a big category that's been driving up prices, not just in the CPI data, but for actual people at their houses, they've been having to pay a lot more for food up 1% in the month of June. Fortunately, food as well. If you look at wheat over the past 30 days, the past month, the price of wheat has been falling pretty dramatically. A lot of the price increases that we saw in food and in wheat especially were due to the conflict in Russia and Ukraine. Those actually are two massive grain producing nations, and both of them had to stop temporarily, at least stop most of their supplies being sent out during the course of the conflict because uh, they were worried about those supplies being either destroyed or taken over by uh, their counterparts. So you can see, fortunately, just a couple of days ago, Russia and Ukraine signed a UN-backed deal to resume grain exports via the Black Sea. They've formed a truce to the extent that they're going to allow each other to export grain. So they're going to make sure that there's no weapons and that kind of stuff on these ships that are exporting grain. The conflict overall will still continue going on, but it's looking like some supply lines, at least for grain and oil, are starting to get shored up again. Uh, people are starting to see big decreases in the cost of gas. I've at least noticed that in my area because oil has been falling for the past while, especially during the month of July. We've seen fairly low prices of oil. It's still not quite gotten back to normal from before the conflict, but we're getting pretty darn close on oil. And if you look at wheat, we are actually at pre-war levels for wheat. We're back where we were during the month of November, December, January, before this whole conflict got started. And overall, stock prices... If you look at the past uh, little bit have started to reflect this you can see the S&P has started to move back up just yesterday we actually got bounced off of a key level for the S&P 500 the $400 level for the SPY 
And, you know, that's just a psychological resistance. Hopefully over the next couple of days, we'll be able to conquer that and move back above it. And we'll hopefully be able to get back up there and start seeing stock prices appreciate. It looks like it's already begun. Hopefully the Fed is also taking note of these big categories, mainly oil and grain slash food that have started moving down in price. Hopefully inflation will follow suit. There's no real good reason why it shouldn't unless other categories start to take over, maybe apparel or something weird like that could start to skyrocket for whatever reason. Hopefully that won't be the case though. Uh, all things considered, you know, the data that we're looking at, it's looking fairly good. We should see potentially even some deflation in the next CPI report, depending on what else goes on in the economy. As long as we're mostly uh, keeping the same course with oil and grain and food, and things don't change too much over the next couple of days for the last couple of days of the month, we should hopefully see maybe some deflation in those categories that could overall bring the CPI report down significantly from where it's been in past months. And that's exactly what the Fed wants to see. That's exactly what investors want to see, right? Inflation is probably the biggest threat on investors' minds right now. That's what people are hugely worried about. And if we can start to quell that, if we can start to get that to look a little bit better in the CPI report, at least, then we could start to see stock prices move up in potentially pretty big ways. And we can talk more about that in other videos. But that's what we've got for this video, guys. If you appreciate that, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button down below. And other than that, don't forget, none of this is financial advice. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.